If you've ever spread positivity with me in Atlanta during one of my live streams, you would have noticed there's over 20 different commands for TV head. That's a lot. I'm ATL TV head. In this video, I'll cover how I built my gesture recognition glove and the data science behind it. My plan is to reduce the amount of chat controlled commands down to four. Each one of those chat commands, along with a recognized gesture, would trigger a different animation on my TV head. The gestures I'm looking to collect are waving, fist pumping, and my arms moving while I skate quickly. Sensors that can detect these large motions include LiDAR sensors, flex sensors, and muscle electrode sensors. But they all come with their own drawbacks, whether it be cost, or complexity of placement, or fragility of the sensor itself. That leaves me with using accelerometers and gyroscopes to actually collect these big body gestures. I used Fusion 360 to model the sensors, their layout, and the wearable housing on my arm. All of the mechanical files are provided on the GitHub repository for this project. The microcontroller I chose to use is the ESP32 Thing Plus by SparkFun, and the accelerometer I chose to use is the LSM6DSOX 6DOS sensor by ST. A push button is also connected between ground and pin 33 on the ESP32. Now that we have our sensors in place and our physical hardware constructed, it's time to collect data. On the Arduino side of things, compile and upload the AGRB training data capture script to the ESP32. This script sends acceleration and gyroscope information over USB to my Raspberry Pi backpack. On my backpack, I launch the capture data Python script, which asks us to type in the gesture we are performing. Every time the push button is pressed, new data is sent to the Raspberry Pi and saved as a CSV file. We'll use all of these CSVs when training our model. But for now, let's explore the data and see what information we can glean from it. Each of the gestures appear to be pretty unique when looking at the time series plots for both the gyroscope and acceleration data. I then looked at a comparison plot to see if there were any linear or logistic relations between these axes of motions which I did not find any, but I did see a little dancing cat. Performing a principal component analysis on the raw data suggests that the acceleration is actually most critical to determining a gesture. On a normalized set of data, the gyroscope information contributed slightly more to determining gestures than the acceleration did. Moving forward, I'm only going to train my model on the raw accelerometer data. Because I eventually want to implement this project on the ESP32 itself, I'd rather not have to pre-process all my information. In total, I collected 200 samples of gestures, about 50 samples per the different gesture type. This is a very small gesture set, and my model will most likely overfit. To overcome this, I implemented some augmentation techniques to my training set. I increased and decreased the peak magnitudes of my data set, I increased and decreased the overall magnitude of my XYZ data. I time shrank and time stretched my gesture. I added noise to my data points and I shifted the snapshot window of my gesture so it appears to start sooner and later. Before augmenting, I had 168 samples in my training set, 23 in my test set and 34 in my validation set. After augmenting, I ended up with 8,400 samples in my training set, 46 in my test set, and 68 in my validation set. It's still small, but it's a lot better than before. I chose to test an LSTM and a CNN model. Because our data is a time series, it means that each point within our sample is not necessarily independent from one another. An LSTM assumes there is a relationship between data points, so it makes it an obvious choice. A CNN is also good at extracting features from within a time series. Both models performed well when looking at the training and validation accuracy and losses. However, the LSTM seems to be a little bit overfit. Both models predicted the gestures in our test set perfectly. So really it would just come down to which model can we make smaller and predict quicker. And from my findings, that's the CNN model. I then wrote a test script which predicts gestures based on live data from my glove. Because the model performed well, I integrated it into the positivity pack sketch, which recognizes a gesture, pushes it live to Twitch for my TV head to detect and change modes accordingly. 
two pipeline scripts automate data gathering, augmentation, and model training for future ease of use. Some future work includes shrinking the capture window of a gesture from three seconds down to one or two. This will help the gesture recognition to feel more fluid, especially when running in free mode. As I come up with more complex gestures to be detected, I'm sure I'll have to go back and see if the gyroscope data improves any of that performance in the future. Lastly, I would like to deploy this on an ESP32, so I'll have to brush up on Tiny Machine Learning's implementation pipeline. All of the data, training scripts, and a whole lot more can be found in the GitHub repository for this project, link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.